welcome to Meta Analysis for Hedgehogs. So for today, I will try to replicate something I already did in IDA Pro, that is writing a script to decrypt or decode the strings of Nighthawk. And um, first off, you can obtain the sample from MeWebBazaar. You just need to um, log in, register uh, for free, and then you can get the sample if you search for Nighthawk with a tag. I will also put a link into the description below as usual. What is Nighthawk actually? It's a um, paid penetration testing framework and it seems that some thread actors have recently started to use it. So for this sample, let's start Gaidra. I'm using the default options here and also I highly recommend um, that you do not do this when you um, the first time you obtain a sample uh, before you actually open up this assembler decompiler or anything else. Um, check the sample first in a PE viewer, check it, um, check the strings, open it in a hex editor, roughly look at the structure and the strings you see there. Now, one of the things that caught my eye were the strings in the sample. Um, you open the strings over here with uh, window define strings. And now these does, this does not show all of the strings in the file. Um, these are only the defined strings. So I, even though you can see strings in Gaidra or Ida, I still recommend that you just run the strings exe from this internals or strings command from Linux um, first. You can also see here, um, it is the analyzing and while it is analyzing, more strings are being added to this defined strings list. So here we see them. Um, this is something that immediately looks to me like there has been some either some XOR or substitution cipher being used um, because you have repeating patterns in the code. Uh, commonly strings that are referenced by malware, they will have certain patterns, like they might often end with uh, certain file endings, .exe, um, they might reference um, paths. So you have often the same start of the path, like C windows. Um, and what you see here is um, patterns with, you know, here's the same start of it. And then um, there's, a, there's a slightly different ending. So these are probably strings that start with the same substring if they are translated. Um, also, it seems to me here that the um, slashes are maybe not substituted because slashes are very common in paths and they are roughly in a location you would expect them for path trans translations. So um, the thing um, that surprised me about Gaidra scripting, it was way easier to write a script for the string translation here. Uh, and make it, put it into a state that I can work with. Um, the reason is, one of the reasons is because of the strings representation here. Um, if you change this strings representation, let's say um, it will shown like this in the disassembler and also in the decompiler. Okay, it's decompiling, it takes a while. It was probably a big function, so um, yeah, anyways, you will see that, um, yeah, now it's called foobar in here. Um, and it's like, like this is the actual value of the string, but the binary is not changed. Um, the content, the string value is still this, as you can verify it here. Um, it's just the representation and the code, it changes and there's, to my knowledge, nothing like this in IDA. Uh, and this is very, very useful. So you can basically just translate the strings and if you don't like it, you uh, can delete it again. 
clear translation value and now it's the uh, previous value. So if you do any mistakes, no problem. Um, now, how does this work? Now we need to know how the um, string decryption works. I um, The first thing I do is where is this string called? Like if you click on it, you get to the location where it's written to and here you see the cross references and you can click on them. So you find the location in the code. And here we see it. Now we will assume, of course, that this string, it's still decompiling, so code is changing on the fly, um, that this string must be passed into a decryption function or some decryption function must be like right below that. Um, we see here it is here is um, the reference to it and here's the function call. So that's the first function call we should check. But what we see here is a typical um, for C++ string um, construction function. So this will basically create an STD string type um, out of the, let's say, C string type. Uh, why do I know this? Because I've seen this before. So um, we will have to add, unfortunately, Gaidra does not have the type for this string. Why did it hop back? Let's go. <laughs> Here we are. Um, it does not have the type, the string type, an STD string type for C++. Um, so we will have to add it manually. You do this here in the data type manager. So you right click on your project file and you say new union. We will have to do a union for this first and then use this as an inner structure. So the first one is um, the STD string union and we will say data type char with the name pointer to the string. So um, the way this works is if it's a long string, we will have in this union a pointer to char array or to, to the actual string. And if it's a short string, we will just have an array of characters directly in in the string struct. So let's put it this way, short string, long string, might be easier. So, and this is also efficiently packed. So we save this type and now we create the actual struct because it has some more information about the string. Um, and that is now a struct and we call it a CD string without the U. And the first data type is our um, STD string union. Um, and we just call it start because it's like the start of the struct and then um, we need the size which is of the type size t call it size and there's also a maximum um, size mentioned that's uh, the cap so um, packet one all right and now this is our string. Save it. And we can now edit the function signature so that this is an actual um, returning our std string. This is a um, new string. Now param one. And you check this 
below um, is being returned. That's a return value. So this is the return value and this is put inside um, and this is the um, the actual size of the string. So we have here um, a char array with the size and what we get back is this value. So let's edit this and uh, this is the out string char and string and um, size t and that's the size of the string that should be correct so and now the code is better readable um, but actually this is not the um, the decryption function that we wanted to look at so we are going back where it had been called you see here the string assignment um, and just below that you know this is the output string yeah um, so that's the actual encrypted string and can we put correct the type here yeah that looks better um, the encrypted string is passed to this function below so this is the next candidate for being a decryption function and this looks this looks better um, we see here there are two big strings being referenced um, this one you also see in the code there is a search for an index um, the second one you do not see directly but um, it's it's used here um, in this area um, that's because the decompiler is a little bit odd here with the translation but let's clean this up first so we can actually understand this better um, first we will correct the function signature of this decode string this is a this is the return string or, or um, out string this is the in string and it returns also an std string so this function here it searches for one character that it finds where in this one you can right click highlight secondary highlight set highlight see where this is being used now this is an index this is an index because it's uh, yeah that's the same index actually so let's rename this to index and that is also an index this is, those are actually the same um, because here it is set incremented plus one and set to the other index so um, it's the same yeah now it iterates through this set the highlight here and we see this is the same as the in string. So we can rename this to encrypted string. And that's the string length of the encrypted string. And these two, um, they are recognized by IDA. 
Um, not by Gaidra, but I already know they are just some memory setting functions. You can ignore them. Um, now what this is doing, we have here a loop inside and this loop is checking if this index is um, at the string size. So uh, the string size of the encrypted string. So this one will um, try, well, iterate through all of the characters of the encrypted string and then try to find this character in this big alphabet. That's actually an alphabet here, substitution alphabet. So let's rename this to, no, that's a plain text alphabet. Substitution is the other one. Here is the substitution alphabet. Because once it finds that is like the found index for the plain text character, and this one is then replaced with the same character that is at the um, the other alphabet, which is the substitution alphabet. What, what is happening is also it's subtracting here from the found index 60, so it basically lands directly in the other alphabet that's before that. So um, if you have, let's say you found for five, um, the index, you jump back 60, you will land here, I guess, somewhat. Or if you find H, you will land um, right here in this area. So this is a little bit hard to understand the way this is uh, decompiled, but um, if you use another decompiler, you, you get a little bit of a different representation for that. But um, yeah, that's what it does. So it's just a substitution in the end. And now we are ready to write a script that um, decrypts the strings for us. So we go to window script manager and there are lots and lots of example um, scripts that are already there. There are also Python examples. So if you are more familiar with Python, you can do the same in Python, just call the very same APIs. Um, here's a, in strings is a translate strings script. So right click that, edit with basic editor. You can use Eclipse if you want to. Uh, you can also use IntelliJ, which are IDEs for Java. Um, and then it will, you know, have all the advantages that an IDE has. This is not the case of the script right here, but um, I at least would like to have some form of um, syntax highlight. So I'm gonna do it in here. and I can make the script a little bit bigger for you to read. So we're gonna rename this to decrypt nighthawk strings. That's our class. And you can see here, um, most of the more complicated stuff is already done. Um, and we just write our string translation in here. So all we need to do is do or replicate this, um, string decryption function in Java or Python if you want to use Python. So we are doing that. For that, we need the alphabet. We will um, um, substitution. alphabet come on so s is our string
and um, so we want to iterate through the encrypted string and that is the simple for loop that we use to access the character we can use index of yeah index of what um, it's easier if we turn this into an array array because then we can deal with an array here whereas for this plain text alphabet I want to use the index of function let's turn the string also in a char array that's the encrypted string as to char array i and that is a char no that's an index that we get and found index So what are we gonna do with that? We do exactly the same as our malware. Um, we need first need to check if there is if this one was found. Um, it could be that there's a character that wasn't found. In that case, index of will return minus one. So we say if it is not minus one. Um, then we replace the actual string. Actually, we will just do here an, an in string replacement um, um, let's just use some cryptic name <laughs> right. So we can replace it right here without having a confusing name index we replace this with the subs alphabet at found index and then we can return the string that we created by this um, Let's just check that I didn't forget anything. We need, um, we still need the alphabets. We are gonna copy them from here. For that one, I don't know yet if there's a, a good way to copy this other than, um, you know, making this part a little bit larger. get the proper array here. So this is what we will use. Um, let's open the script manager again. We are going to copy this. We name it Nighthawk string decryptor um, you will just copy all of that wait we can use the one here copy all of that well, that, that has to have the same name as the file save this one and run it and it's compiling 
So did it work? We will see this in the defined strings section. Right, it seems to work because we now decrypted all of the strings, all of them. Like you see here in the string, that the strings representation is what we changed. And the problem is now we have also um, basically decrypted and in that case encrypted the plain strings into something else. So we say edit undo. Um, but um, that is because we didn't have um, a selection. So the cool thing about this script is it will automatically check here uh, the current selection. And I guess if you don't have any selection, it will just take all of the strings. So instead of um, just running it, we first Now it's better. Yeah, we first select the encrypted string area. For instance, like this, without this, and then make selection. And now we run the script again. And if you check it now, these, uh, the plain text strings, they are still like the way they were, but what we, um, where we made a selection, those are translated. So whenever you see, oh, I forgot something, doesn't matter. Now, let's say I, um, yeah, I have this use RVX uh, right here, say make selection and run the script. Now I encrypted this use RVX, but I can just say clear the translation value and it's back to where it was. So this is um, quite neat because that's something I don't have in IDA. And um, yeah, now we can start to actually analyze it um, more properly because having the strings is a great way to find where certain things are done in the binary. So like finding the key logging function, you would look into this area and check the cross references. So that's it already for today. Um, Happy reversing.